Welcome to Daniel Weekly, number 16, first one, 2015, and today is the exact anniversary of my um, first year at Mozilla as an employee. Um, I wanted to mention that the, the episode 15, the last one last year, actually uh, just surpassed 1000 views. Kind of fun, kind of cheating too, since it's been up for several weeks. Anyway, good to see some interest in, in my videos. This is a, a brand new recording device. This is a new Nexus 6 doing this recording. I had the Nexus 5 before. Of course, the, the 6 didn't fit in my old stand anymore, so I had to get the new stand. Bah, bah. Anyway, let's see if there's any difference in, in video quality or whatever. <clears throat> I'm trying now again without my headphones and without an external mic, so we'll see how the sound goes or Hears or whatever. <clears throat> we did the release on uh, January 8, postponed to avoid the the holiday season. So uh, as we released two security related uh, advisories to within uh, in association with that release, then the first one being a URL um, injection thing. So uh, curl actually parses the URL properly and it splits up in, in it splits it up in different components like a host name and path and so on and um, and it actually doesn't allow anything to inject there but uh, after it had done all that parsing and everything and when communicating over an HTTP proxy it would copy the entire URL again and, and insert it into the request so even though it didn't except the CRLF codes in the um, original parsing were actually it stopped on those and only cut out the little pieces it needed. It would copy back the CRL, CRLF carriage return line feeds into the request when, when using HTTP proxy. And therefore uh, some uh, an, a malicious attacker could do uh, very crafty URLs as if your application allowed that kind of input from a user and then it could a, a, a malicious user could do craft the extra requests or extra headers into requests that actually weren't supposed to allow that. Sneaky, I don't know of any attack that actually uses this, but it is fixed now in 7.40.0. We reject all URLs with either uh, carriage returns or line feeds. <clears throat> uh, we also fixed a Darwin SSL, um, the, they call it secure transport in Mac OS X, in, in our backend using that. Um, so only uh, affecting Mac OS users and uh, iOS users. Um, we would um, store this SSL session ID with a with a key that uh, kind of uh, doesn't take the certificate status into uh, certificate certificate checking status into account. Yeah, that's my daughter using in the background. Uh, so you would if you would do a connection without checking the certificate or kind of if you would be fine with not having whatever certificate you would do a SSL connection and then you would um, switch on the certificate che checking again and do another uh, uh, request on that same site it would be fine it would just skip the certificate check since you had already done a session and that session would be cached and reused <clears throat> Also, kind of a, a, a specific set of circumstances that you actually have to meet and, and experience to actually suffer from this problem, but still a problem. So we fixed that too. We reported it to Apple um, Product Security actually already like December 17 or something, uh, but they never got back when I asked for a CV number. So I reported it to the uh, distros at Open Wall list too, and I got a CV number from them. So everything everything is fine and dandy. <clears throat> I haven't heard anything back from, from Apple, so I don't know when they are going to do any uh, subsequent updates or whatever, since they have this flaw in their um, binary releases in, in, with Mac OS. Uh, that was about, that about it in 7.40.0. The biggest things we did in that release, as I mentioned before, is the SMB support, the protocol and um, uh, using Unix domain sockets instead of TCP for for, for the TCP based protocols, except for FTP, since FTP uses two sockets and you don't do that with uh, Unix domain sockets. <clears throat> In HTTP2 land, there is action going on since tomorrow, on the 14th. 
January 14th is the um, last day of the last call for uh, for feedback and critics and uh, whatever about the uh, HTTP2 draft that is about to become an RFC, hopefully, potentially, uh, after that then, depending on exactly what the comments from the last call is, according to regular IETF procedures. So if you have any comments about HTTP2, the spec, provide them fast. <clears throat> There's been a lot of discussions and there was this article posted by PHK uh, about uh, his disappointments and in a lot of HTTP2 details. I would say it's, um, it doesn't match my opinions on a lot of details in the, pro in the protocol. And I've t taken the um, opportunity to address some of those complaints mm -hmm. uh, in, in my next edition of my HTTP2 Explain document, which I hope to get uh, posted soon. I'm also working on, a, on my um, presentation for FOSDEM about HTTP2, so I'm kind of doing them in parallel, so I'm hoping to get some refreshed uh, artwork and some refreshed details and, and numbers and graphs and everything for both the presentation in, in, at FOSDEM and in the document. So, uh, well, I would probably the bigger update to the document in a while we'll see I, I um i can't promise exactly when that's gonna ship you can get it from uh, github already now if you're curious <clears throat> uh, and about the uh, fastem then i also got my uh, a second talk accepted at fastem so i'm going to talk about curl on the saturday in the embedded room called internet all the things and um, I have this HTTP talk in the Mozilla room on the Sunday, Sunday morning, uh, Saturday midday, whatever. The embedded schedule is not uh, online yet for some reason, even though it's less than three weeks left. So stay tuned for that. <clears throat> so I don't know exactly if my preliminary timing is, is going to stick in the finally publicized um, version of the embedded room schedule. So <clears throat> check it out. Yeah, I'm also going to meet uh, several um, other curl core hackers at Fostem, like Dan and Steve and Mark. So if you're uh, into curl, ping me and um, we, we can meet up and discuss uh, details and uh, indentation rules and column limits and uh, everything else that matters when coding curl. Um, I also updated the uh, very fancy not so. Uh, page about the cur my curl versus wget page, which I actually try to, I try to be fair, but of course I'm biased, so I lean towards curl because that's what I decided to do back in a uh, hundred years ago. But I'm actually trying to keep the facts correct and accurate. So if you read a page and you feel that I've left out something or should add something or something is wrong, tell me. I I, I do want to have it. Yeah, up to stuff. Uh, I'm talking about uh, updating web stuff. Then I also went through the when I di when we did these two new security vulnerabilities in curl. Well, we published them. Uh, they turned out to be the number twenty nine and number thirty among the total number of vulnerabilities since um, since the start actually. So I and when I, when I went worked with that I. Um, went through and polished the website regarding vulnerabilities. So I kind of enhanced how the look of that. I decreased the, the, the size of the HTML table in that vulnerabilities summary page a lot. It turned out to just become a fifth of the original size. And I'm gener now generating individual pages with status pages basically for each release ever done not exactly, but since 6.0, which was in 99. For every release done since 99, I generate a specific um, individual page with just status. These vulnerabilities exist. These known published things exist in this version. So it should be easy for you to just check that page and see, wow, my old version I got X years ago have these problems. Just to make it easier for everyone to just be aware and, and know the status and those are all automatically updated so if we by any chance discover a new vulnerability soon we can just 
press make in the in the build directory and wham we have a new everything is set up uh, as we should um, in my fancy style of uh, not being able to do fancy websites but at least it works and it kind of runs itself pretty much and it generates a large set of static web pages so they're pretty lean on the server too <clears throat> um, that's about it for this week on a Tuesday since we, I had some minor mishaps here at my um, in, at home yesterday and I decided that who on my anniversary day is a good day anyway so yeah one year at Mozilla today I'm gonna keep on working at Mozilla I'm gonna keep on polishing your network code in Firefox going further I didn't mention anything about my work that uh, now this week either I've been struggling to land this thing and I'm facing all sorts of random interference or colliding into different other areas that I'm trying to fix or address uh, in the so uh, I'll probably get into some other Firefox details in a, f in a future episode when, when I get into something interesting that will be coming surely <clears throat> okay HP2 last call um, tomorrow is the last day otherwise uh, I'm going I'm working hard on my um, preparing my presentations then for fast time and there is uh, always bug fixes and polishing going on in the car project I do want to fix a couple of DNS cache improvements in the, in the curl when using many simultaneous um, transfers and you like when you resolve the same host name with 50 simultaneous transfers. Well, that's it for this week then. Um, tell me what you think, what you consider, what you want to hear, what you don't want to hear, or if you think my haircut is uh, unpolished today. Whatever. Uh, see you again next week. Bye.